Is there new hope for patients with Parkinson? Today we're speaking with Pekka Simula, who's the CEO of the Finnish drug development company Herantis, that's on its way to Nasdaq First North in Stockholm. Welcome, Pekka. Thank you. What does Herantis do? We're a clinical stage drug development company aiming at breakthroughs in significant unmet needs. And um, obviously, as you said, on our way to Stockholm. Mm -hmm. Which uh, main diseases are you focusing on? Parkinson's disease, which uh, as most of you know, uh, is a progressive brain disease to which there is no cure. And lymphedema, not as well known disease, but still a significant unmet need and a common consequence of cancer treatments. Mm -hmm. Uh, how big are these two markets? Parkinson's disease has uh, about 10 million patients worldwide and it's a significant societal cost, so it's estimated to cost societies over 50 billion dollars every year. Lymphedema is much more common um, in general, but when we speak about cancer-associated lymphedemas, which is our first target, then we're talking about uh, uh, approximately 150,000 patients diagnosed every year uh, in the uh, main markets, so US and Europe. Mm. Uh, which uh, phases are your research candidates in at the moment? With uh, lymphedema, our lymphectin is currently in a phase two clinical study. So uh, uh, looking forward to a clinical proof of concept by the end of next year. And uh, our CDNF for Parkinson's disease is currently in a first in human study, but we've been able to do it already as a randomized placebo controlled study. So even from that, we are looking forward to efficacy signals already in the first quarter of next year. So it's going to be a very exciting year. Mm. Uh, if all goes well, when could there be phase uh, three, three, three trials, the last stage, so to speak? With Lymphactin, the phase two study that's ongoing is designed to lead directly to a phase three study. So uh, if everything goes well and the data are good, then uh, 21 we'd hope to launch a phase three study immediately. And that would then be the pivotal study that leads to market approval. Mm -hmm. uh, with uh, CDNF in Parkinson's disease, uh, it depends much more on the results of the study and also on our partnering discussions. This is of course a huge undertaking aiming at disease modification of Parkinson's disease. So a significant breakthrough in Parkinson's disease as opposed to just symptomatic treatment. So uh, this could be a very significant program. Mm. In uh, which part of the world do you think you could uh, market these uh, drugs? Lymphectin certainly is uh, predominantly a kind of a Western treatment initially. It's a gene therapy and definitely US market would be the main value driver uh, for lymphectin. Uh, and uh, with CDNF, the initial treatment, uh, CDNF protein, uh, is more complicated. We also believe that that would primarily be kind of a Western kind of medicine. But we have a very exciting next generation program following up, which would be even more easily administered and we believe as such uh, more suitable for a global treatment anywhere. Mm. Uh, what do your competitors do when it comes to these two diseases at the moment? With um, lymphedema, it's uh, mainly been a neglected disease for a very long time, so there is very little competition. We could almost say that we are the only uh, serious uh, science-based drug development program in lymphedema, uh, at least in phase two. And uh, so there is really very little competition. And of course, our mechanism is totally different from anyone else. And um, in Parkinson's disease, it's of course a very exciting stage for numerous drug development companies. But again, if you look at uh, assets that are really trying to develop a disease modifying treatment of Parkinson's, so not just trying to treat the symptoms, but really, really uh, even stop disease progression, which would be a huge change for the patients in any neurodegenerative disease. There are very few clinical stage assets in the world. Mm. Uh, in your share offer, you value the company at about 400 plus million sec. Would you say that the biggest value lies in uh, which of these two uh, candidates that you have? We are very excited about both and the, the uh, market opportunities of both. Um, if you look at the Addison uh, analysis uh, produced by Edison Research, they value both uh, as roughly equal, and I think that's a very good basis. Mm. Uh, how do you plan to reach the market? Are you going to do everything on your own? Or are you going to get partners into the game? The current setting in our lymphedema product is such that we believe that we definitely can do a phase three study on our own, and we could even commercialize it, at least in certain areas on our own. Uh, in Parkinson's, of course, it's a totally different story. It's such a huge, uh, huge unmet need. Uh, that would lead 
more, most likely very large uh, clinical studies to fully uh, unleash its potential that we believe that uh, we optimize shareholder value best by, by uh, finding the best possible partner at some point in development. So already before reaching the market? So I wouldn't believe so, yes. Yeah. Uh, drug development is obviously a risky business. Uh, what do you think are the main risks in these two projects? These are novel science. These are based on leading science in their fields in the world. So obviously we are very excited about having already brought them very far in development and in uh, uh, in uh, placebo controlled clinical studies. Uh, so, of course, we are doing something for the first time in the world. So, the main risk really is whether we can prove that the promising scientific efficacy can be translated into humans. So, the about 25 million SEC that you plan to take in now uh, plans to keep the company funded until the first quarter of 2021. Uh, do you have any plans for when to be cash positive? We haven't provided any um, guidance on that yet. Obviously, it depends very much on the readout of the clinical studies that are now ongoing and then um, also possible partnering associated with that. So, uh, so uh, we'll have to wait and see. Mm -hmm. When you look at the road ahead, what do you think are the main challenges for the company? Apart, in addition to the uh, obviously having strong clinical data, developing the company further, so making sure that we'll have the expertise required for the late stage clinical studies and commercialization of these assets. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you think are the most important trigger points ahead for the stock that can make the stock move either up or down? Again, in addition to clinical readouts from the randomized clinical studies, um, if there was uh, a partnering agreement that would uh, would uh, signify the value of one of these programs, that might of course be very interesting from a shareholder viewpoint. Mm. Uh, the Herantis shares are already listed in Helsinki, and now you want to list it in Stockholm as well. Uh, why is that? Um, in Finland, um, believe it or not, we only have one publicly listed drug development company listed in Finland. So uh, obviously, we're lacking peers. So uh, coming to Sweden makes a lot of sense, not just from that viewpoint, but you, you have a very strong heritage of drug development in Sweden. Um, big successes in the past and also a lot of smart money to put it nicely so uh, investors who are very knowledgeable about drug development which we are still uh, largely lacking in Finland so I'm sure also our Finnish institutional investors have already appreciated that so for instance we have uh, Svedberg Robots Medica now as a cornerstone investor to Herantis we have uh, Nordea's uh, small capital fund as a shareholder in Herantis and uh, I'm sure it brings a lot of confidence in our Finnish institutional investors to have this kind of, uh, kind of uh, investors already getting interested in Herantis. All right. Thank you, Pekka, for being with us and good luck. Thank you.